In this demo we're going to delve into standard web parts and build a working example. So here I have an empty web part that I've just created in Visual Studio and it has provided for me the create child controls overridden method. So in create child controls I can start adding ASP.NET controls such as in this case a very simple literal and I'm going to call it message and in its constructor put a very simple hello world type welcome message. Notice I can format it as h3 HTML styles if I please. Critically I must add my ASP.NET control to the control tree and this it will ensure that it gets rendered but would also allow the control to participate in server side events and so forth. I can right click my project and then choose deploy. And Visual Studio packages and deploys my web part to my SharePoint site. So let's switch to SharePoint and go to the home page. And from there I can go to my test web part page very simply by clicking a few links. I can then edit the page and insert a web part. And I will locate my new web part that's in the custom category. And there it is. I'll click add and it gets loaded to the page. And it's rendered already but when I click save that's the view the, the normal user will get. Now that's all very simple, but so I'll build a, a more compelling user interface now. I'll just remove my label control and add um, a, so a block of code that works with a date time control and a, a, and a query and so forth. So let's have a look at this in a bit of detail. First thing I'll do is declare a class level variable, which is a, a list view by query type. And I'll call it my custom view. And we'll use that in our, our create child controls method. The first thing we do actually is create an SP web object and then we instantiate a microsoft.sharepoint.webcontrols.datetime control. So this is something provided by the SharePoint object model. We set some properties and then we start working with the web. So we have the this web object set to the current web and then we can start working with the date time control as well so we'll hook up um, an event actually for when the user changes the, the selected date now critically we add the date time control to the control tree and then as you can see we start working with the list view by query so we first of all set its list property to tasks we then set its view fields and query to uh, camel or collaborative application markup language very very simple the view fields define what to show and the query camel defines what filter to apply to the list and down in my my date control date changed event um, we can redefine that query so that it uses the currently selected date so the, the camel is very straightforward and you'll see much more camel throughout the rest of this uh, this course so let's save that and uh, redeploy it our existing solution is retracted and and this one is added and when I switch to Internet Explorer and refresh the page our new user interface will appear when the page refreshes so there we are we have our date time picker control um, so how easy was it to use that that's pretty straightforward the user can simply click the drop down and choose a selected date and when the date changes we redefine the query for the the list view so very very simply the the user can filter their due tasks in this in this case so let's choose a few different dates and see some few uh, a few different views of our data and there we have our filtered list has been been updated let's have a look at the actual tasks and we can see the the physical due dates there 